title of the book is uh, Destroyer of the Gods, Early Christian Distinctiveness in the Roman World. Uh, it's coming out with Baylor University Press in September this year. And um, the readership that it's intended for is a fairly wide readership. I hope that it would withstand this critical scrutiny of scholars, but it's not restricted or directed primarily to scholars, but primarily to a wider kind of uh, reading public who are interested in the ancient world and interested in uh, the origins of Christianity. Um, the purpose of it is, as uh, <laughs> the subtitle indicates, to highlight several features of early Christianity that made it um, distinctive, even odd, in the Roman uh, religious environment, cultural environment. Uh, the main purpose of it is, is to try to make that sort of historical point. Uh, I think in our uh, understandable, commendable effort to try to understand Christianity as a historical phenomenon, um, people have often drawn uh, similarities between aspects of Christianity and the larger Roman culture and its indebtedness. I mean, the fact that really Christianity has a meal as the central, a common uh, corporate meal as the, as the central kind of ritual, you might say, uh, action, and how sacred meals and common meals are sort of ubiquitous in the ancient world, for example. Um, and so all of these things are quite legitimate, commendable, I think, to show that early Christianity was attuned to its Roman setting. But along with that, I think we, shall, we also have to go recognize ways in which early Christianity was dissonant with its setting, uh, different, odd, objectionably so in the eyes of some people. Uh, that that also helps complement, uh, fill out the full historical picture. So that's basically what's going on. As I was doing the book, the additional observation kept recurring that in every one of the things that I'd chosen to highlight as, as um, distinctive features, that each of these features had subsequently become a kind of cultural commonplace for us. And, um, and we probably have forgotten that it is so. And that these things that are cultural commonplaces for us remain rather often rather odd notions in the larger world in which we live today. Certainly in, in the long durée of human history they are. Uh, so each chapter begins with some cultural commonplace, something that we take for granted, uh, and then says this is kind of odd, and then points out this is likely where it comes from, and then shows how, uh, how it originates in, in early Christian distinctive features. set out wanting to write this book or had the idea of, of the edge I wanted to take with the book from probably 2010 or so, thinking that after my retirement in 2011 I would turn to it immediately, but I had such a backlog of previous um, commitments for, for essays and papers and so on that I didn't get around to it until um, actually sort of drafting the, the embryo of the book back in, in 2014. Um, and I think the uh, the, the thing that I wanted to do in the book was, I say, kind of push back against the notion, which I consider a bit simplistic, that, um, that to make a historical uh, approach to early Christianity means to smooth off the differences and to, to see it as just another version of something else that we know in the Roman world. There, it seems to me that uh, that somewhat one-sided or misguided notion uh, is there. Uh, as, as I say, I think it, I think it, it, it springs from the justifiable uh, notion that early Christianity is historically situated and, and is part of its world. But I think that there has been a bit simplistic a notion of simply saying that and not doing justice to the distinctive. So it was, it was that attempt to push back against that and say, uh, yes, yes, everything you say is true, but you also have to take account of this. And that uh, it's not a, it's not, um, you know, it's not an apologetic thing to say early Christianity was odd because you can say it was objectionably odd. It was ridiculously odd. Uh, your judgment about how you respond to the distinctive features of Christian, Christianity in that setting um, is, is your own choice. But a historical analysis, my argument is a historical analysis, a full historical analysis must take account of distinctive features as well as, as, well as those that it shared. And also to emphasize that there is, a, I think, a significant difference between the situation and, and some, of the, some of the characteristics of early Christianity in the pre-Constantinian period, which is where the book focuses, as opposed to the post-Constantinian period. The crucial difference, of course, being that after Constantine, not long after Constantine's recognition of Christianity, 
uh, it becomes wedded to the state, becomes a state religion, and uh, church and state become sort of a handshaking group. Early Christian, uh, uh, Christianity becomes, in effect, the dominant force and is able to marshal the forces of the state in coercing religious conformity, the very thing that in the pre-Constantinian period Christians had been objecting to. So it is, it is also got that edge to it to say pre-Constantinian Christianity is a different thing in some respects from what comes later. <laughs>